Front, mid, and rear engine cars. These names are self-explanatory. They describe the location of the engine in a car. A front engine vehicle has an engine at the front. In a mid-engine, the placement shifts to the rear of the driver. And similarly in a rear engine car, the engine is behind the rear passenger seats. The engine placement is not just about finding the right location to mount the engine. There's much more significance to the location of the engine in a car. Whether it's a front, mid, or rear, each configuration affects the key aspects of a car. Such as interior space, traction, steering dynamics, acceleration, braking performance, weight distribution, serviceability, and boot space. If you are wondering how exactly these parameters are affected by the engine's location in a car, stay tuned we will cover all these things in this video. Let's start with the front engine configuration. This is the most common engine placement and is found in the majority of vehicles on the road. You can easily check the engine by popping up the hood of the car, as it sits on the top, and slightly forward from the front wheels. The placement of the engine over the front axle, allows for efficient energy transfer from the engine to the axle. This configuration is well suited for everyday driving conditions, and provides good traction especially in adverse weather conditions, like rain or snow. Additionally, the front engine also leaves more cabin space, making the driving experience more comfortable for the passengers. It is easy and cheaper to manufacture and service, as compared to other configurations. Mechanics can access and work on the engine, without having to disassemble much of the vehicle. Additionally, front-wheel drive cars often have simpler drivetrain components, compared to rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, which makes maintenance and repair of a front-engine car is less complex and more cost-effective. Front-engine cars benefit from efficient cooling systems. The engine is located at the front of the vehicle, where it receives direct airflow when the vehicle is in motion. This airflow helps keep the engine at an optimal operating temperature, which is important for engine longevity and performance. Front-wheel drive cars tend to have understeer, because the front wheels handle both acceleration and steering, increasing the traction load on the tires. High-performance cars usually don't have front-wheel drive because when they speed up, the weight shifts to the back wheels. This makes the front wheels lose grip and limits how much power they can handle. Also, these cars can have steering problems known as torque steer. When a car has a powerful engine, it can generate a significant amount of torque. When the driver accelerates quickly, especially in lower gears or with a lot of power, the engine's torque can unevenly affect the front wheels. Torque steer typically happens when one of the front wheels gets more torque than the other, causing an imbalance. This imbalance can result in the car pulling to one side or the steering wheel tugging in that direction. In extreme cases, it can make the car challenging to control during hard acceleration. Electronic traction control can avoid wheel spin but largely negates the benefit of extra power. This is why some high-performance cars, like the Jensen FF and Audi Quattro, adopted the all-wheel drive Quattro system to improve traction and handling. In recent times, some car manufacturers have introduced the term front-mid to describe cars with the engine positioned in front of the passenger compartment, but behind the front axle. This layout is the most traditional form and remains a popular design. The main deficit is weight distribution. The heaviest component is at one end of the vehicle. Front engine cars, especially smaller and compact models, often have good fuel efficiency. The layout allows for a more compact engine compartment, which can result in reduced weight and better fuel economy. Front engines found in almost over 98% of all the passenger cars, hatchbacks, sedans, SUVs and MPVs. Early cars using the front-wheel drive layout include the Alvis, Cord L29, DKW F1, the Citroen 2CV, Saab 92, and the Mini. In the 1980s, the traction and packaging advantages of this layout caused many compact and mid-sized vehicle makers to adopt it in the US. Most European and Japanese manufacturers switched to front-wheel drive for the majority of their cars in the 1960s and 70s, the last to change being Volkswagen, 
Ford, and General Motors. Toyota was the last Japanese company to switch in the early 1980s. BMW focused on luxury vehicles, however retained the rear-wheel drive layout in even their smaller cars, though their mini-mark are front-wheel drive. In a mid-engine car, the engine is positioned between the front and rear axles, typically closer to the rear axle. In this layout, the engine's center of gravity is located in the middle of the vehicle, contributing to a more balanced weight distribution. It is usually used for sports cars and racing cars, where the engine is behind the passenger compartment. Because of this, you can expect limited legroom, and these cars usually only have two seats. The mid-engine, rear-wheel drive format can be considered the original layout of automobiles. A 1901 autocar was the first gasoline-powered automobile to use a drive shaft and place the engine under the seat. In most automobiles, and in sports cars especially, ideal car handling requires balanced traction between the front and rear wheels when cornering, in order to maximize the possible speed around curves without sliding out. Having the engine near the back of the seats has some advantages. It helps the suspension absorb bumps better, so the drivers feel a smoother ride. It also allows the motor, gearbox, and differential to be connected as one unit, which eliminates the need for the chassis to handle engine torque. The centralized placement of the engine can make the car more agile and responsive, as it reduces the polar moment of inertia, allowing the car to change direction more quickly. The biggest drawback of mid-engine cars is restricted rear passenger space, usually accommodating just two people. Like any layout where the engine is not front-mounted and facing the wind, makes engine cooling more difficult. This has been a problem in some cars, but this issue seems to have been largely solved in newer designs. For example, the Celine S7 employs large engine compartment vents on the sides and rear of the bodywork to help dissipate heat from its very high output engine. Now, when it comes to safety, mid-engine cars have some issues. They often have superior balance, making them initially more stable. However, if a mid-engine car loses control and starts to spin, it can be a bit trickier to handle. This is because the mass is concentrated between the axles, resulting in a lower moment of inertia around the center of gravity. As a result, the car can rotate suddenly and faster, making it more challenging to regain control. So, while mid-engine cars offer advantages in handling, Drivers need to exercise caution and skill, particularly in high-performance situations. Toyota MR2, Audi R8, Pontiac Firo, Lotus Elise, Acura NSX, BMW M1, Alfa Romeo 4C, Ferrari F40, Chevrolet Corvette, C8, Porsche Carrera GT, are the various examples of cars with a mid-engine arrangement. Rear-engine cars are even rarer than mid-engine cars. The engine is mounted at the back, behind the rear wheels. Generally, this configuration have a rear-wheel drive system. It is commonly seen in performance sports cars. The engine paired with rear-wheel drive allows the car to offer improved traction, better initial acceleration, superior handling, and high-speed stability. However, with the benefit of increased performance, the car comes with its own learning curve. These cars can be a bit tricky because the power going to the back wheels can make them prone to oversteer. Hence, they are harder to drive and require more expertise to tackle oversteering. This is why you are likely to spot such cars on the racetracks, rather than on the roads. But with the proper suspension and chassis adjustments, rear-engine vehicles can become amazing sports car just like the Porsche 911. Many of the characteristics of the rear engine setup are also found in mid-engine rear-wheel drive cars. Placing the engine near the driven rear wheels allows for a physically smaller, lighter, less complex, and more efficient drivetrain, since there is no need for a drive shaft and the differential can be integrated with the transaxle. The front engine front-wheel drive layout also has this same advantage, Now let's just think of a car as a seesaw with two ends. 
One end is the front, where you steer, and the other end is the back. In the middle of the seesaw is the rear axle, which is like the pivot point. The heaviest part of the car is usually the engine, and where you put it affects how the car balances on the seesaw. If you put the engine near the rear axle, more weight ends up at the back of the car. This is called a rear weight bias. The farther you move the engine toward the back, the more weight you put on the back end of the car. Depending on where the engine is, here's how the balance usually looks. If the engine is in the front and the car is front-wheel drive, it's like 65% of the weight is at the front and 35% is at the back. If the engine is in the front and the car is rear-wheel drive, it's more balanced, with 55% at the front and 45% at the back. If you have a mid-engine and it's rear-wheel drive, it's like 45% in the front and 55% in the back. If the engine is at the back and it's rear-wheel drive, then 65% of the weight is at the back, and only 35% is at the front. So, where you put the engine affects how the car handles and how much grip it has on the road. It's like adjusting the balance on a seesaw to make the car perform the way you want. A static rear weight requires less forward brake bias, as load is more evenly distributed among all four wheels under braking. Similarly, a rear weight bias means that the driven wheels have increased traction when accelerating, allowing them to put more power on the ground and accelerate faster. One of the first rear engine car was Tatra 77, the first serial produced aerodynamic car, designed by Hans Ledwinka in 1934. Tatra used this layout until end of production of T700 in 1999. In case of T613 and T700, Tatra used layout with engine above rear axle, which reduced some disadvantages of rear engine layout. Mercedes-Benz also produced several models of rear engine cars in this period starting with the 130H. Porsche has continued to develop its 911 model as a rear engine vehicle, although they have introduced multiple all-wheel drive models. Most notably, the 911 Turbo has been sold as all-wheel drive only since the release of the 993 model. Race-oriented models such as the GT3 and twin-turbocharged GT2 remain solely rear-wheel drive. Early cars using the rear engine layout included the Tucker, Volkswagen Beetle, Porsche 356, Chevrolet Corvair, NSU Prince, and Hino Contessa. Porsche 911, smart for four, and Renault Twingo are the examples of modern combustion engine cars using the rear engine layout. Many modern electric cars also use this layout for base variants with a single motor due to the low weight and cooling requirements of the electric motor. The Tesla Cybertruck and GMC Hummer EV will also use this layout for their base variants. In summary, choosing between front, mid, and rear engine placement in cars depends on what matters most to you. Front engine cars are practical and good for everyday use, and generally the best for consumers. Mid engine cars are sporty and great for performance, but can be expensive and less spacious. Rear engine cars offer unique traits like stability, but might be tricky to handle and have limited cargo space. The best choice is personal based on your needs and preferences. Consider how you'll use the car, your budget, and your driving style to find the perfect fit for you. So what do you think, which is the best, let me know your thoughts in comments. Similarly, just like traditional internal combustion engine cars, electric vehicles also offer various drivetrain options that can significantly impact their performance. From single motors to dual motors, three motors, or even separate motors for each wheel, the placement and configuration of electric motors can make a significant difference in how an electric car performs. Click this video to understand how these different drivetrains affect the performance of electric vehicles.